Radical Remission and Wisdom of the Body, a presentation by Professor Gershom Zajczak, Faculty of Medicine, Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Cancer is generally an incurable chronic disease. Nevertheless, many patients live with cancer decades in peace, since most of the time tumor is dormant. Medicine ignores prolonged survival with cancer or tumor dormancy. Kelly A. Turner was a cancer patient's counselor at a large cancer research hospital in San Francisco, where she first met a patient who survived cancer against all odds. She then scanned medical journals and found over a thousand similar cases in print. She decided to study this phenomenon within her PhD thesis. Her findings are summarized in a fascinating book, Radical Remission, Survival, Surviving Cancer Against All Odds. Dr. Turner defines radical remission as any cancer remission that is statistically unexpected. She distinguishes between non-radical remission or standard remission induced by medical treatment, which may last several years, and radical remission, which may last many years and is statistically unexpected. Such a prolonged remission is called here tumor dormancy. The book describes various methods for inducing cancer dormancy and I dis uh, explain tumor dormancy in a special presentation. She writes, when I began studying radical remission I was surprised to find that two groups of people had been largely ignored in the thousand plus cases published in medical journals. Radical survivors themselves and their alternative healers. She then describes nine key factors for radical remission. Radically changing your diet, taking control of your health, following your intuition, using herbs and supplements and releasing suppressed emotion, increasing positive emotions, embracing social support, deepening your spiritual connection and having strong reason for living. These factors are explained in the nine chapters of her book. She writes, Radical remission cases may not be explainable at the moment, but they are true. The nine key factors described in this book are hypotheses for why radical remission may occur. Cancer dormancy is the main theme of my presentations. Uh, here are some presentations, two more dormancy introduction, Cancer is a chronic disease with extended periods of dormancy. Progression-free survival measure tumor dormancy, melanoma dormancy, and induction of cancer dormancy with Jewish meditation. Cancer is an interaction between tumor and organism. All along cancer progression, host builds up its, his resistance, induce tumor dormancy and prolongs it. Here is a presentation where you find it in epidemiology, epidemiological indicator of resistance to cancer. I regard the eight chapters of this book as different ways for inducing cancer dormancy. What might, there, might be their common denominator? Do all these methods have the same mechanism? In order to answer these questions, we need a framework within which these methods are represented. It is called Theory of the Wisdom of the Body, 
o wob. Wisdom of the body is a conceptual framework in which medical phenomena may be conveniently studied. It is a theory about the interaction between three entities, the conscious, the non-conscious, and the environment. I describe it in an introduction to the playlist of the wisdom of the body. Functionally, Bob keeps us alive. In order to do so, it needs resources which only mind is aware of their where about. When Bob needs a resource, mind dira directs it where to get it. In the past, mind evolved from Bob and is part of it. Bob does not need the mind to keep us alive. When I go to sleep, I, Bob, turn off my mind and Wob keeps me alive in a mindless state. The same occurs in coma. Wob theory studies and describes the communication between the three realms. It is less concerned with their nature. Wob is myself even during a mindless state like coma. Consciousness has two meanings. A state, when asleep I am in a non-conscious state, when awake I am in a conscious state. A property, anything in me which I am not aware of is my non-conscious, like the level of my blood sugar. Wolf theory deals solely with the second interpretation of consciousness. Wob is a set of my non-conscious functions, yet Wob is always awake, so-called. I distinguish between two kinds of explanation or narrative. First-person explanation means how I understand or experience my mind and Wob, known as I point of view. Third person explanation is what medicine has to say about my mind and warp. When I observe myself, I am aware of my sensations, feelings and thoughts. This is first person experience. I have no notion of my organs and particularly the brain. Their existence is conveyed to me by expert as third-person explanations. I am mainly interested how the to control my body, particularly during disease like cancer, which is the central theme of this site. Since cancer is a chronic disease, controlling it means to slow down its progression and induce dormancy. So I turned to brain sciences for ideas how to control disease. And this I describe another, in another presentation, conscious manipulation of the non-conscious. Tumor is initiated and evolves within the realm of WOP. Clinically, it follows through the following stages. Preclinical, which ends at the diagnosis. Clinical compensated when tumor does not impinge on other processes, and clinical decompensated when tumor impinges upon other processes. Tumor is generally a non conscious process which proceeds through two phases. Non conscious, it starts at tumor inception and proceeds during the compensated clinical stage and parti particularly partially conscious when tumor impinges on other processes and causes pain and suffering. It is a decompensated clinical stage. Components of the partially conscious phase are conscious when tumor impinges on other processes and causes pain and suffering, 
and non-conscious include host resistance, induction, and maintenance of tumor dormancy. Since host resistance and tumor dormancy are non-conscious processes, they may be activated or boosted by signals to WOB from mind. Here is a simple scheme illustrating the messages between mind and WOB and the exterior. Sense organs collect information from the environment and transmit them into in two channels, one to mind and the other to WOB. Mind converts sense information into image. So here you have the scheme of me. This is a mind, my conscious part. This is a, my unconscious part, which is a WOB. And the communication between mind and, and WOB is through images. What I imagine, I communicate to WOB. And WOB converts this communication to a function, as I shall show immediately. We have two kinds of senses, conscious senses to the mind and non-consciousness directly to the WOB. Sensation of a sense organ is converted into a distinct image. It is remembered in the mind as an image. Usually, we take image to be a picture. A melody is an image of a sound sequence. A smell of a steak or its taste are two distinct images of a steak. So image is more than a picture. You may regard it as a representation of a sense. Here is the law. I think in images, not only when daydreaming, but always. Reality is represented in the mind as an image. Image is the only brain currency. Whatever is exchanged between mind and WOB is an image. Mind continually sends images to WOB, which converts them into actions. And there's a filter between, Im between mind and WOB. So image is the only message from mind to WOB. WOB does not communicate directly with the mind. A filter called verge seals off any direct message from WOB to mind. WOB messages are transmitted to mind indirectly by special sense organ like the proprioceptive sense organ. So here you have, there's no communication from WOB to image. Only indirectly is the communication from special sense organ in WOB. I describe it obviously in other presentations. Our task is to send a message to WOB to initiate tumor dormancy. I, mind, imagine putting my tumor to sleep and send this image to Bob for execution. Its effect is meager and needs boosting. So when I say I want to be healthy, it works, but it is not strong enough to make me really healthy or to put the tumor to sleep. So here we have two methods for communicating ma our wish to WOB. Our wish, I mean the mind wish. There's the indirect WOB manipulation and by meditation, and healing is a direct WOB manipulation. So here you have a scheme of meditation, which I explain in other presentation. In order to meditate, I cut off my senses and the, di the direct sense and uh, the Bob sense and gradually sink into the tumor, into the Bob 
realm where I imagine the tumor and put him to sleep. This is the indirect uh, warp manipulation which I explain in other in other presentation. And here you have the scheme of healing. So when I go to somebody else, the real healer has the capability to connect directly to my wob. In order to succeed with this, I have to cut off, shut off my mind and shut off any communication from wob to mind and then the healer can put my tumor to sleep. I described in presentation wisdom of the body and the control of the non-conscious. Wisdom of the body and my control of the non-conscious. So na the nine keys or the nine key factors for radical remission are nine signals between mind and wob and here you have the essence of the signal. So radically changing your diet is a signal for mind to wob. Taking control of your health is a signal mind to wob. But following your intuition is a signal from wob to mind. It's, it is unconscious. Using herbs and supplements, mind to wop. Releasing suppressed emotion is also mind to wop. Increasing positive emotion is wop to mind, which means both send us emotion and the mind ought to increase them. Embracing social support is the effect of the exterior on the mind and indirectly on WOP. Deepening your spiritual connection is a signal from, from WOP to mind. It includes also meditation, which I described. And having strong reasons for living is a message from mind to WOP. And here you again, you have how, what I mean is Wop to mind is a message going indirectly from the wop to mind, like increasing posi positive emotion, and the exterior to mind goes through the senses and indirectly to <coughs> the wop. And again, I remind you, I interpret it as various ways of various signal to induce to more dormancy. We may now classify the signals according to their efficacy for inducing tumor, do, tumor dormancy, and you will realize also in other presentations that the signals warp to mind are more effective than the signals mind to warp, but everything works. It's only a matter of efficacy. Conclusion. Wisdom of the body is the conceptual framework in which phenomena described by Dr. Turner are studied. It is a theory about the interaction between three entities, the conscious, the non-conscious, and the environment. And you are invited uh, to listen to a presentation, Conscious Manipulation of the Non-Conscious, which means how you can manipulate the non-conscious or the warp in order to induce to more dormancy. I hope that you enjoyed this lecture and now believe in your conscious control capability. Enjoy! <laughs>